A few weeks ago, someone asked me if I could fit an RTX 3090 into the XZ Mod XQ69 case. I don't know how he suspects that, because I actually do own the card. I don't really need a 3090, but the prices of the RTX 3070 and 3080 are too good, so everyone tries to scalp them. That's why before 2020 ended, I decided to grab this ASUS TUF RTX 3090 OC edition on Craigslist for MSRP plus tax price. I thought that I could temporarily wait with this card until the price of everything went down, and if the 3080 Ti got released, I would sell this and buy that card. Boy. How wrong I was because with the mining craze and limited stock, everything is jacked up even more than what happened in 2018. Um. The ASUS TUF 3090 is a 2.5 slot card, so its thickness and height are very similar to my old Strix 1080 Ti. However, the TUF RGB logo and the power blocks are higher than my Strix. So it may cause some troubles if this card is plugged directly to the motherboard in some ITX cases. But if the Strix 1080 Ti can fit in your case, I think this card would cause no problem with installation. From here, I want to pay tribute to my 1080 Ti card. It was the best purchase I made and the card kept me through all the price craziness within 3 years. Plus, the gaming experience I got from it was top notch despite being a 2 generation old. So, I hope the guy whom I sold the car to can still find it useful. The body of the car is mostly made of metal, so it is very heavy. It has a cutout at the back plate for flow through cooling. There are 3 fans, and a middle fan runs in the opposite direction to the two outer fans. According to ASUS, this helps reduce turbulence noise. Plus, to keep it more silent, the fans will not spin until the card reaches 50 degrees Celsius. However, even though I try updating the card to the latest VBIOS, the zero decibel feature does not work properly. The fans constantly spin at 52% when the temperature is only 40 degrees, and I saw that many people with the Strix Edition have the same issue. I tried using MSI Afterburner and ASUS GPU Tweak 2 to create custom fan curve. GPU Tweak 2 did not change anything, and Afterburner just made the fan stop completely. I can give MSI a pass, but the card is made by ASUS, yet their software can't control it. ASUS has made so many softwares and most of them are trash. Luckily, I found a fan control software that helps me eliminate all the issues. I could create a custom fan curve for the 3 fans on my graphic card so that they would not spin until the temperature was 55 degrees and up. With this software, you can create fan curve for any temperature sensor such as VRM or M.2 SSD. So, technically, you can control the GPU fan speed according to the M.2 temperature. This software is the combination of ASUS AI Suite 3 and GPU Tweak 2 and makes ASUS ashamed of themselves. The software version I'm using is 59 because the newer version could not control the fan header on my AMD X470 motherboard. However, newer versions work fine on my Intel Z390 board. I will have link to the creator YouTube channel and GitHub in the description. Back to the RTX 3090, as you already know, the RTX 3000 series no longer has USB-C display port, so using one cable for the ASUS HG17 1080p monitor is no longer possible. Talking about monitor, am I wasting the RTX 3090's power with a 1080p monitor? I don't think so. Let's see why. This is not something new, but I just recently discovered a feature which has been around for years. I am currently using a 1080p monitor, but here you can see that I have 4K resolution. By simply go to NVIDIA Control Panel, Manage 3D Settings, you can enable DSR factors, which allow us to use higher resolution than the default resolution of the monitor. 1.78x is for 1440p and 4x is for 4K. DSR stands for Dynamic Super Resolution, and with this feature, you can enjoy 4K gaming on your current high refresh rate monitor without buying a new one. 
4K resolution can be used outside of gaming in Windows 10 desktop. Just make sure the DSR smoothness is set to 0% and change the Windows scaling to something like 250%. The TUF 3090 has a small switch that allows changing between quiet and performance mode. Even though I stick with OC mode, after learning how to undervolt GPU from Optimum Tech, I always do it to achieve higher clock speed without increasing the temperature. At 900mV, I could push the car to 1950MHz. Now, let's have a few benchmarks on non-RTX and RTX games. First, probably my favorite of all time, The Witcher 3. For me, the game is just timeless in both story and graphics. It is too optimized that even a Nintendo Switch can play it. All the graphic settings are maxed out. This area is a busy area with different NPCs doing various activities. Thanks to the 4K resolution, the GPU usage stayed at nearly 100%, so there was no CPU bottleneck caused by the Ryzen CPU. Frame rate was kinda all over the place, but I can see the game had no issues staying above 70 FPS and average around 90. You can see that slowly working out the crowded place brought the frame rate up to more than 100 FPS. So, Beside big cities like Novigrad or Buclair, hunting monster in the wild at 4K with 100 plus FPS is pretty awesome. Scaling down the game to 1440p and 1080p would significantly reduce the GPU usage. There was no difference in FPS between the two resolutions due to CPU bottlenecking, but there was a slight boost in FPS when dropping from 4K. So, the Witcher 3 is just too easy for the RTX 3090 to handle. Next non-RTX game is Rockstar's Red Dead Redemption 2, and this is a very demanding title. Let's take a look at my current graphic settings. Triple buffering was turned off because we are using, you know, an RTX 3090. However, that setting was a lifesaver for my GTX 1080 Ti and the RTX 2070 because it allowed me to boost the frame rate to above 60 FPS. The rest of other settings was maxed out, except TAA, FXAA, MSAA, and Motion Blur were turned off to keep the game from being blurry. At 4K with Ultra settings, the game struggled to stay above 50 FPS. So for a non-ray tracing title released in 2019, I think Red Dead Redemption 2 will still need a few more generations of GPU to be easily defeated like GTA 5. I was using Vulkan API so frame rates should be higher than the X12, but this is also a very demanding scene with all the details of trees and grass plus the water reflection, so I was not surprised to see the game had low FPS. Lowering from 4K to 1440p increased the FPS to low 60, but once I enter area with many trees and water, the frame rate dropped to 50. What surprised me was 1080p resolution. I got similar FPS like 1440p, but CPU usage was not high, and the GPU usage stayed above 90%. So I think ultra settings with the RTX 3090 is not worth. I try to tweak the settings a bit to make the game more playable. I turn off tree tessellation because some people claim that it could boost FPS. All the settings which were set at ultra was turned to high. And with the changes, at 4K, I could play the game at low 50. This made the game feel way smoother and I need to pay a little more attention to see the choppiness. Moving to 1440p, the average frame rate around this area was at mid-60. To be honest, I still don't see the difference between ultra and high in games like The Witcher 3, GTA 5, or Red Dead Redemption 2, except the number of frames. Sure, for benchmarks, I would push the GPU to its limit, but when I play, my settings are usually at high to get more FPS. At 1080p, 
the game constantly stay around high 70 in demanding areas. In all the places, I can see the FPS getting up to 100 plus. So, using a 1080p high refresh rate monitor with an RTX 3090 is not a waste. The technology is not there yet to get rid of this resolution. For RTX game, we obviously have to check out Cyberpunk 2077. For 1440p and 4K resolutions, turning on DLSS is a must to get the game run at playable frame rate. I currently had everything maxed out, but ray trace lighting is off. At 4K, the RSS is set to performance. With these settings, at this area where we don't have many NPCs, the FPS range from low 50 to mid 60. Lowering the resolution to 1440p, I can change the RSS from performance to quality to make it clearer. Not only the image quality improved, but the game can reach 70 FPS. However, there were some dips in percentage of GPU usage. I feel like the 4GB Ryzen 7 3700X bottlenecks the RTX 3090. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. And to confirm that, I lowered the resolution to 1080p and turn off the RSS. I used the card on my Intel i9 system to play the game at this resolution. The frame rate constantly stay between 70 to 90 FPS, but here we only get around 60 to high 70, and even dipped below 60. I know that at 1080p, we need a good CPU to play the game, but I am surprised that even at 1440p, the Ryzen 7 already affected the performance. Cherry Blossom Market aka Japan Town is a very strange area. At high settings, no matter what resolution I used, 1080p, 1440p and 4K with DLSS, my FPS kept going below 60. I encountered the same thing on my Intel platform. Maybe this area is very CPU bound, so if you play the game, please let me know if you have FPS drop when hanging around here. I am currently near the end game already, so I don't care too much about it. But to get constant 60 FPS with my Ryzen 7, I need to tweak my settings a bit. I don't know if the game is just poorly optimized, but for now, a high clock speed CPU is definitely needed to play. The next RTX game I want to show you is Control. Let's take a look at my settings. Resolution was at 4K and no DLSS was turned on. Everything was cranked to the maximum and only MSAA was off. Ray tracing was set to high and I turned on all the ray tracing option. Well, of course, the frame rate of the game was crap. The RTX 3090 could only get around 30 to 40 FPS with the settings. But by simply dropping the resolution from 4K to 1440p, the game is so playable without using the DLSS. The FPS were constantly above 70 without any dip. I know that Cyberpunk 2077 is an open world game so it is more demanding, but if that game can perform just like Control, it would be so awesome. Well, asking too much. Dropping from 1440p to 1080p gave the game 100 FPS. It felt so good that the lower the resolution I changed, the more FPS I got without worrying about CPU bottleneck. To play the game at 4K, DLSS needed turning on, and render resolution was set to 1253. 1440 worked, but the FPS would range between 50 to 60. So, that was the reality check of how this card can perform in gaming. How is productivity? With NVIDIA Studio Driver and recent updates of Adobe Premiere Pro, hardware encoding with NVIDIA GPUs has been improved significantly. Before, I usually sticked with software encoding, which required more CPU cores because I used the old version of Premiere. But things have changed. 
I'm currently using Premiere Pro Build 51. I rendered the first 2 minutes and 35 seconds of this video. My video output was set to 4K 60fps with target bitrate of 75 megabit per second. The Ryzen 7 3700X took 484 seconds to finish rendering. The RTX 2070 took the second place by 203 seconds, while the RTX 3090 took 201 seconds. So, by switching from software encoding to hardware encoding, my video processing time has been cut more than half. With longer videos like this, rendering with a GPU can save me lots of time. For shorter videos in the future, I think I will consider rendering at 8K 60fps with their RTX 3090. The file size will be huge for uploading, but screw it. From this, it would be safe to say that I no longer need more CPU cores. And to answer the question if this RTX 3090 can fit in the XQ69 case, unfortunately, no. The RGB logo is too high. Hopefully, Dr. Zaber would create a new case, and when he goes exclusive again, some guys in China will copy and make something that cheap people like me can buy. Just kidding. I already tested the triple fan configuration on the Noctua NHD9L CPU cooler, and with this RTX 3090, I think I am ready to build in a mini ATS case with these two. Stay tuned for that build in the future. That's the end of my video, I am sorry that it is quite long, but if you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.